Welcome. Let's understand basics of synchronous condenser, an old tool rediscovered, to address new grid challenges. So, what is a synchronous condenser? Is it a rotating electrical machine or is it a motor or a generator? Or is it a motor driving no load or a generator without a driver? Synchronous condenser are rotating electrical machine that closely resemble synchronous generators. However, they are not generators, as they are not driven by an engine, or turbine. Nor are they motors, as they do not drive a load. A growing number of network operators, and renewable energy developers, are now turning to synchronous condensers, to provide additional short circuit power, to strengthen their grid. SCS also help maintain power quality, and provide fault ride through capability. An overexcited synchronous motor, running on no load is called, the synchronous condenser. It is also known as synchronous capacitor, or synchronous compensator, or synchronous phase modifier. A synchronous motor can deliver, or absorb reactive power, by changing the DC excitation, of its field winding. It can be made to draw a leading current, from the supply with over excitation, of its field winding and therefore, it supplies lagging reactive power or absorbs leading reactive power. Underexcited synchronous motor. When the synchronous motor is underexcited, then it draws a lagging current, form the source and hence, supplies leading reactive power, or absorbs lagging reactive power. Therefore, the current drawn by a synchronous condenser, can be changed from lagging to leading, smoothly by varying its field excitation. Overexcited synchronous motor at no load. When an overexcited synchronous motor is operated at no load, it takes a leading current and hence behaves as a capacitor. As the overexcited motor draws a leading current from the supply, it absorbs leading reactive power and delivers the lagging reactive power. When such a machine connected in parallel with induction motors or other inductive load, that is, devices that operate at lagging power factor, and absorbs the lagging reactive power, this lagging reactive power, demand is met by the synchronous condenser. Thus, the inductive load does not take the lagging reactive power, from the supply and the power factor of the plant, has been improved. Today's Environment For most utilities ensuring grid reliability, efficiency, and security is a primary concern. As the grid evolves and load profiles change, stresses are being put onto transmission and distribution networks, making the need for voltage support and grid management much more challenging. Globally, utilities are facing many new grid challenges and conditions including changes in generation mix, decreases in conventional generation, increases in renewable and distributed generation, environmental and regulatory policy changes, driving the retirement of traditional, coal-generating stations. These challenges have an operational impact on the electrical infrastructure, in particular creating an overall deficiency in reactive compensation support, voltage support, system inertia, low short-circuit strength need for synchronous condensers in weak grid applications, especially in support of renewable generation and HVDC systems. This is the single line diagram for synchronous condenser connectivity arrangement. Item number one is the pony motor. The pony motor and VSD will ramp up the speed of the synchronous condenser to synchronous speed and after that, the synchronous condenser will be synchronized to the grid and the MVCB is closed. After that the pony motor will run to energized. So the pony motor is only used during the short starting procedure of the synchronous condenser. Item number two is excitation system, reference input is provided through voltage transformer. Item number three is the generator circuit breaker. Item number four is the synchronous condenser. Core components. Synchronous condenser system consists of 
Synchronous condenser. Static or brushless exciter. Control, protection, synchronization, and excitation system. Step up transformer. Auxiliary transformer. Condenser starting system. Cooling system for the condenser. Lubrication oil supply. Other equipment as needed. Here four different configuration has been shown. First is standalone configuration, where only synchronous condenser is considered. In second configuration, synchronous condenser and statcom is considered. In third configuration, synchronous condenser with self-start mechanism and statcom is considered. In fourth configuration, synchronous condenser and battery storage is considered. Each configuration has its own pros and cons which we shall discuss in upcoming slides. Here synchronous condenser is connected, at 11 kV level, and power is step up to 275 kV, through step up transformer. Auxiliary transformer is tapped from LV winding, of power transformer to feed, auxiliary loads of synchronous condenser. Layout plan arrangement is shown in picture, for better understanding. In this system solution, single 3 winding transformer is considered, and feeding two numbers of 70 MVAR capacity. So reactive power can be controlled from 140 MVAR, inductive power to 280 MVAR capacitive reactive power. Provides a contribution to the short circuit power, in the range of 900 MVA. Provides a contribution to the inertia, in the range of 1800 megawatts. Here two technologies is combined, one with synchronous condenser, and other is voltage source converter, this is called hybrid configuration. This picture shows, hybrid synchronous condenser arrangement. This picture shows, hybrid synchronous condenser arrangement. We will see below topics, of synchronous condenser system in next video. Inertia support. Fault level contribution. MVAR capability. Location of synchronous condenser. Layout arrangement. Losses etc. Thank you for your attention and time. More stuff coming soon. Don't forget to subscribe.